members of your team before you address the press. But just before the Director General comes on, let me speak to a number of issues. Our nation is bereaved. Families are broken hearted and in pain. The government of Liberia announces that on Monday, March 25th, 2024, a must slide in a time called Kyo Town, a former gold mining area. The Trail District Number Two in Riverside County led to the entrapment of a specified number of persons. It has been confirmed that up to ten bodies were recovered, and that search and rescue operations are ongoing. Joint statement taken by the National Disaster Management Agency, the Armed Forces of Liberia, the Liberia National Police, the Ministry of Health, the Red Cross, the Ministry of Mines, and any. The government extends condolences on behalf of the President. The Vice President, the Speaker, the Pro Tem, the Chief Justice, and the whole of them, and on behalf of the Liberian people to the affected families. We pray that God will grant sweet repose to their souls. We will continue to provide updates to the public on the situation as it unfolds. When the Unity Party Alliance and our collaborators chose the mantra rescue train or rescue mission, we were consciously aware that Liberia was a nation in peril and that the nation needed to be rescued. Civil liberties have been restored. Peace and security have been consolidated. The drugs epidemic is becoming history. Basic social services have been improved. In short, the nation is once more on the move, and the future is bright. Some of the dividends of this rescue effort are clearly manifesting. Lost voices of the past, especially in the last six years, now put their voices back. If you're following, Media, some of them historically known for loud talking, but were intentionally silent in the last six years, have regained their voices, They're making the loudest noise, discussing the economy, criticizing everything. It seems not good. People are wondering where were they in the last six years. Of course, we know the last six years they didn't permit them to do so. Because many of them are cowards. They only speak when they realize that civility is around. We came to ensure that the nation becomes more democratic. 
So while we are acknowledging that their forces are being restored, we do so with the intent of sin. You can now begin to see the manifestation of what we say we will do. If men turned to babies yesterday and could no longer talk, will not have their forces back, that's progress. That's what we came to do. And that's what we will do. We let to state. This is not with the intent to respond to anybody in particular. That the government of Liberia is very united and strong. The executive, the legislative branch of the government, the judiciary, one government united on purpose, committed to serving the Liberian people and delivering services as we promised. So those who believe that we take our eyes off the price, focus on politics rather than governance, are mistaken. The next six years will be a period for governance, not politics. Time for politics will come. And it's a time we always prepare for because we know what it takes to do politics. There are others who are bent on seeking to take our attention away from the whole issue of governance. You're not going to succeed with that. We will The president enjoys an excellent relationship with the leaders in all the branches of government, to include the speaker, the deputy speaker, the protein, Chief Justice and other Justices of the Supreme Court. So those who are imagining that there is a plot, quote unquote, to remove a speaker, must find other talking points that would make some sense. For there exists no plot to remove anyone, not even the speaker. A lot of those who have concerns, and we've seen different publications, different headlines, <coughs> different newspapers, trying to sow this seed of discourse, trying to create an impression that we do not have a united government, that rather than thinking about how we build roads, how we have education in the hospitals, how our schools will work again, how our people can feel safe again, rather than focus on that. Those who are thinking that we have a government that is divided, and that things that are of least importance are the priorities, think twice. We will continue to see the manifestation that the government is united is strong and is focused on delivering services to our people. Just before I close, the CSA, CSA boss will come up. So let me see from the perspective of the Ministry of Information because I have been here for a couple of days now as minister. The government in the past have what is called harmonization. Everywhere in the world, you improve things. You don't devalue anything. People work, you want to touch their salaries, it got to be upward, not downward. Many wrong things happen, and to balance the book, affected all those who work in the We have come and we have seen we've seen discrepancies on our payrolls. We've seen indication that most of these payrolls are so filled with ghost names. 
we see salary inequality. All of you here, maybe some of you got master. How do you feel working on an institution you have for a master degree? Somebody paying two hundred dollars. Somebody in the same institution has a high school degree or high school certificate of like six hundred dollars. Is that something that you possibly imagine supposed to happen? These are the realities we are confronted with. And it's the whole of government problem, plus more, which is same sense, is very committed to addressing. So you will hear from the Director General and the team what they've seen, what action they are proposing, what action they've taken to remedy this ugly situation that has been our country in the last six years. And I want to say it again to the lost voices that I invited to expand the space for you. We want you to talk more. But we know who you are. Having said that, I'm pleased to invite my friend, my brother, who's not in public service like me, the Honorable Josiah Joker, the head of the Civil Service Agency. Honorable uh, uh, Director General Minister of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism. Honorable Darlington A. P. Smith, Deputy Director General for Human Resource Management and Policy at CSA. The Honorable Donald Miyagi, the Deputy Director General for Administration at the CSA. The Honorable Principal Administrative Officer, Alfred Drossier at CSA. Mr. Joseph M. Swain, our Communications Director. Mr. Roger Avin Kamal, Senior Assistant. Support to the Office of the Director General. Esteemed members of the Fourth Estate. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Civil Service Agency, I sincerely thank the Ministry of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism family for graciously of the CSA's commitment and readiness to forge a partnership with MECAP to advance the goals of the arrest agenda. The government of Liberia, led by His Excellency, President Joseph Yuma Bwakai Sr. is steadfast in his commitment to transparency, accountability, and good governance in public finance management. Therefore, recognizing the pressing need for reforms within our civil service, we embark on a decisive journey to overhaul our workforce for enhanced transparency, efficiency, and productivity. Today, it is glaringly evident that widespread discrepancies, inefficiencies, and irregularities plague our civil service. As highlighted during my induction ceremony, I assume responsibility for an excessively bloated payroll, encompassing 67,746 personnel across 103 governmental spending entities. This translates to an alarming average monthly wage expenditure of 
$543,874.64. To illustrate the magnitude of this issue, a basic employee headcount exercise conducted by the CSA had select many entities yielded troubling results. At the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs, a significant portion of the workforce, represented by 69 individuals, could not be properly accounted for, strongly suggesting the presence of ghost employees. Similarly, at the Liberia National Police, 98 employees remain untraceable, raising suspicions of fictitious personnel on the payroll. Regular internal controls audits and assessments conducted by the internal audit agency consistently unveiled numerous detrimental issues, persistently undermining the integrity and efficiency of the civil service. A few of these critical issues include payments to individuals or personnel for services not rendered, indicating instances of fraudulent payments, payments issued to ghost employees resulting in substantial financial losses due to fraud, wastage, and misappropriation of funds, violation of Chapter 7, Section 2.5 of the standing orders of 2012 by paying full salaries to employees who are on steady leaves. <laughs> Unauthorized absences from official duties with illegitimate or no excuses provided to cover up these instances. The continued payment of salaries to employees who have left their positions due to resignation, dismissal, Redundancy or death highlights serious flaws in payroll management and public finance accountability. Additionally, the past administration spent 6.1 million United States dollars in the last fiscal year alone on consulting services. This astronomically high expenditure does not reflect the quality of job or consultancy provided. Taking the CSA as a case study, we review the photos of 18 consultants selected, employed, and remunerated. I found the followings. None of the 18 consultants received a contract until after nine months into the so-called annual engagement. Of the 18 consultants, eight did not have a valid contract in their folders. Only 12 of the 18 consultants participated in the headcount exercise. The remaining six did not show up to date and are still unaccounted for despite receiving payments. In short, they are ghosts. And no reports for services provided. No performance appraisal reports, no timesheets, and no terms of reference. The revelation of these disparities underscore for comprehensive reforms to rectify these egregious discrepancies and prevent further misuse of public funds. Such reforms are imperative to restore our civil services efficiency, responsiveness, and integrity, and ensure accountability and transparency. Consequently, the Civil Service Agency has taken decisive action by requesting the General Auditing Commission to examine payroll compliance across all 103 spending entities forensically. The audit covering the period January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2023, will provide valid insights into the extent of financial management and irregularities, mismanagement and irregularities within the system. The government fully supports this critical national initiative 
and is committed to providing the necessary resources to facilitate the CSA and GSE's effective execution of this audit. Additionally, the Honorable Liberian Senate and House of Representatives are expected to offer unwavering support for auditing their respective central administration's payrolls, giving their vested interest in addressing the reported human resource management and financial malpractices that have plagued our civil service, their cooperation is essential in ensuring the success of these reforms. It is often said that he who comes with equity must come with clean hands. In other words, these crucial workforce reforms must begin with the CSA itself. Over the last six years, the government and its partners spent millions of United States dollars on projects intended to modernize critical human resource management systems, including payroll, performance management, testing, employment, and pension. For example, the World Bank spent over 10 million United States dollars on the public sector modernization project. Several other government entities receive hundreds of thousands of dollars from our own and foreign taxpayers to implement different aspects of the project. So it is only befitting that we gain full insight into the project's success and failure measures. Against this backdrop, Mr. Minister of Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, we have requested the GAC to conduct a forensic system and financial audit of the CSA's governance and financial operations, including government funding and donor support from January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2023. That's the period of the audit. This audit is expected to be part of scheduled audits beginning July 2024, which will cover, which will be covered in the GSC's budget. We profoundly thank the GSC for their support. We sincerely thank our partners for their invaluable support with special recognition to the World Bank for its assistance during the previous payroll audit in 2021. Regrettably, despite the recommendations made during that audit, implementation did not follow suit, underscoring the necessity for the forthcoming payroll examination and the CSA's audit. Today, I am delighted that the CSA is collaborating closely with the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning to finalize the payroll automation process. This initiative involves transitioning our payroll system from the highly manipulated alternative temporary automated pay system, the ATAPS, to the more efficient and modern civil service management system, the CSM. This transition marks a significant 100-day deliverable milestone of President Buaka's administration to streamline our payroll management procedures, greatly minimizing human intervention and reducing instances of waste and abuse of public finance. Moreover, while transitioning the new system, we intend to keep the ATAX version of the payroll accessible specifically during the upcoming essential payroll compliance audit and the CSA system and financial audit to ensure that all payroll related discrepancies are appropriately captured during these audits. As an integral part of CSA's ongoing reform efforts, we have meticulously drafted comprehensive policy guidelines to transform the selection, employment, and management of consultants and consulting firms across the government. This policy, when completed in about two weeks from now, will be officially launched by His Excellency, President Joseph Yuma Buaka Sr., marking a significant departure from the immediate past corrupt consultancy practices. To provide context, the previous administration's expenditure on consultancy services only for the last fiscal year amounted to a staggering $6.1 million, United States dollars. In stark contrast, the CSA has proposed a consultancy budget allocation of $2 million, United States dollars for the upcoming fiscal period. 
reflecting an impressive savings of $4.1 million. This fiscal prudence, coupled with implementing the brand new consultancy policy guidelines, promises to yield substantial dividends for the government. With this austerity measure, the government can now redirect the 4.1 million savings to other basic services, including education, agriculture, healthcare, and sanitation, consistent with the arrest agenda. Today, with immediate effect, the civil service agency has blocked the salaries and subsequently removed from the payroll all individuals employed as of December 18, 2023, in violation of former President George Manning Weah's directive to suspend all new employment and service contracts across government institutions. Additionally, the CSA will work with all spending entities concerned to reverse all promotions and salary increments during the period of the presidential directive. Regarding personnel headcounts conducted at the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs, the Liberia National Police, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the CSA has also blocked on their payrolls the with immediate effect, employees not accounted for, pending the conclusion of the verification exercises. Also, the CSA has realized that several individuals on the payroll receiving pay whose personnel action notices have not been completed in keeping with Chapter 3, Section 4.4 of the Civil Service Standing Orders of 2012. You may be interested to know that several individuals were placed on the payroll through emails, matrices, and phone calls. Consequently, the CSA is thoroughly reviewing the payroll and incomplete personnel action notices of the individuals concerned for further action. With these strategic reform measures in place for the immediate term, we are confident that the government will achieve significant cost savings and optimize the value derived from sanitizing the payroll and consultancy engagements, ultimately ensuring that taxpayers' money is effective. The CSA remains steadfast, Mr. Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in its commitment to these immediate reform processes to foster a more accountable, efficient, and productive civil service for all Liberians. Thank you. I was the voice of the Director General, the Civil Service Agency of Republic of Liberia, Honorable Josiah Zutokar. So this is for the CSA Director General, who will provide you a copy of the statement I'd like to encourage you to please get in the queue, introduce yourself, and ask your question. This is, so, I would like for you to please do a few questions at the time, then you can respond to them. Thank you. 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 These are these are these are great journalists. Uh, I know most of the faces here. Uh, I know the CSD boss spoke very well. But I show for the interest of our people that are clarities that you will want to see. It is unheard of, especially among veteran journalists like you, that you will have a press conference and you fall short of ask, asking questions. And I see Trumpon is coming forward. <laughs> and I'm conveying that sooner or later in line will get longer than that. You are great people. Do great things. If they did, you would take questions from you. 
Let's start with the two persons in the group. Thank you so much. I'm from a and I report for Spoke FM and TV. You spoke lengthily about consultancy across the government. Uh, some people are concerned, like viewers are concerned that uh, some musicians were accused of doing consultancy for the government. Did you in any way, anyhow, doing your evaluation assessment process? You saw any name as such, maybe Taco and the rest of the people. Can you tell us, please? I told you I didn't laugh. I said I'm not a journalist, but uh, as well. I said respect for journalists. I'm a journalist. I have a degree in journalism. Not working on consultation. Sorry. I think that's a question. That's a question. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. 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 Thank you, Mr.
So it's going to be appropriately addressed. In terms of where the money is going to be moved, it's going to be a decision that will be made later. But I can assure you that the CSA will continue to make full disclosures on every aspect of its operations. And when we come back here the next time, we'll be able to tell you how much we were able to save in that respect and where uh, those amounts have been applied or redirected. So on the issue of the pain not being processed, not following, the pen process of uh, higher rents for that matter, yes. As a matter of fact, the first action we took was to quarantine thousands of banks, personal action notices that are incomplete when I signed by the former director general. That's how come we got to know that so many people were placed on the payroll just through simple text messages, through emails, just call and say, put them on the payroll while we are processing their pens. And the law provides that before anybody gets on the payroll, the pain process must be completed. You have to complete the entire process before you become a bona fide employee of any given institution. Did you, can you tell them what is pain? The pain is the personnel action notice, and that is processed per individual employee. It contains all your employment information. Without that, you are not an employee. So outside of that arrangement, the Civil Service Act, Mr. Minister, provides that that process should be completed before you are considered an employee. But in the case, the case in point, that was a different story. So as I indicated, people were placed on the payroll just by people calling and asking people to place them on the payroll. So we are taking immediate action to block all those people on the payroll and make sure that we investigate thoroughly. I already quarantined the pens to that effect, the personnel action notices to that effect and we will be investigating them. We have a pool of analysts. Probably that will be your next question. How will you do that huge you know, number of bands? But we have a pool of analysts. They are very efficient, professional, and they will analyze those bands. So what uh, do we say? Oh, the sample of the band, thank you, here. Here's it. The personal action notice. It, con it contains, thank you, it contains all the information of a given employee that must be processed through this. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Right, right so uh, Gay asked, uh, Gay, I know I met you a few days ago, yeah, and thank you for coming. Um, Gay is not a journalist, he's a librarian, very, very concerned about the current state of affairs in the governance process, and he promised me, Mr. Minister, that he was going to attend this press conference, that's why he is here. So I appreciate your question. You asked, what do we save, right? Yeah, we're going to save a lot. So we're going to save on the payroll. In fact, we have not started saving yet, because the real audit is coming. And I'm going to talk about that. I know some of you have questions regarding that. The audit is going to be forensic. The audit is not just a basic head count. The head counts we've been doing have just been test cases to know so we can see the extent of the red flag while we go into the audit. But the audit is going to be comprehensive. Those auditors are going to go into personnel files. They will go into personnel files. We want to see the timesheets. We want to see the performance appraisal reports. We want to see the terms of reference of consultants. We want to see the services, the reports of the services that they have provided. And we want to see them physically, in person. We want to make sure they are counted. And, and we want to match that with what they have in their folders. So, the Honorable Minister talked about discrepancies such as somebody who has a master's degree is making $450, and somebody who is just a high school graduate, some, in many cases, with no experience, because I know of somebody in my institution who, is, who was just pumping gas, who is a senior administrative person. Yeah, so, but the person is being paid more than somebody who has a master's that I know somewhere. So, the audit is going to bring out all this information and the recommendations, I can assure you, Mr. Minister, the recommendations will be scrupulously implemented. Those who know me where I work, you know that there's no joke about it, and my team, I'm so glad I have a robust team, uh, 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 Mr. Mianyan and Mr. 
Smith, very committed. We are a powerful team. We can assure the government and the Liberian people that the recommendations from the audit that will be conducted will be fully 100% implemented because we need to streamline the workforce, not only because we want to reduce it, but because we want to professionalize it so that we can increase the efficiency and productivity of the government. And the way to do it is to get the right people in there. That's what we need to do. We know it's the social responsibility of the government to provide jobs for people, but the government too has to make sure that the right people get a job so that the government can effectively deliver on the mandate of the people. And to do that, the CSA is committed to making sure that the right people are in the civil service, professionalize the civil service. And that has to be matched. That measure has to be matched with the wish bill. This is strenuous. This is imposing so much constraint on the government. Government cannot spread out to many of the productive sectors. Many of the sectors that are having mandates by law to provide basic social services, education, healthy, our teachers are languishing out there. They're providing services, preparing us, but there's no integrity associated with the services that they provide. The healthcare workers across the country, the security officers who take care of us internally and our national security as well. I mean, we have to make sure that we bring integrity to the services that they provide. And the way we can do it, their compensation, their remuneration, we have to work for us. How do we do it? Streamline the workforce and make sure that that measure matches with the wage bill, manageable, effective, efficient. We can raise the revenue as timely as possible. And then the savings, we can move the savings towards uh, the sector like education, prioritize our teachers in the rural areas, prioritize the healthcare workers in the rural areas, prioritize our security officers across the country. We can do that, it's possible. And we have a responsibility for our mandate to do that. So I thought you asked a, a, a very good question, a valuable question. So uh, Trocon asked about musicians specifically. Uh, Trocon asked as to whether or not in our, you know, assessments that we have done, whether or not we have seen the names of musicians I will not make any disclosures of such yet at this point, but I can tell you the extent to which um, the whole consultancy arrangement was inappropriate, was wrongly done. How uh, we we attain losses, you know, from the process, six point one million dollars. That was too much not to have an effective civil service, not to have an efficient uh, government operations. Because when you are a consultant, you are expected to bring new ideas. You are expected to build people's capacity. You are expected to transform people, skills, knowledge, and equip them to be able to perform better. But as I said, I look in the photos of some of the consultants, you don't have any information regarding the kind of services they provide. So Troka, I cannot even tell you the kind of consultants that we have across the government, but I gave you the CSA as a test case Meaning, there's a serious red flag in terms of all those who provide consulting services across the government. But here's what I can assure you, Trocon and all Liberians interested in this question, that the comprehensive audit is definitely going to take care of the consultancy payroll as well. So that we go in the photos of these people, that we identify them, we get to know who they were those who provided the consultancies, and at an appropriate time, the public would get to know. Thank you. My name is uh, Reagan Levy from the Liberian Agency, Minister of Information. So, basically, today, I want to say thank you to the Minister of Information and Mr. Jokai, who uh, did well in explaining those of the things. But I came here this this morning uh, on behalf of the the head workers, uh, the security guys that you just mentioned, and uh, all the people who voted for this government. Uh, they have been disenchanted uh, in the past administration because of the reduction of salary. Now, Chief, who, the Liberian people want to know how do you intend for all of the challenges that you just mentioned? You talk about red flag. You talk about. Uh, uh, looking at a consultancy uh, problem and stuff like that. Yeah. How do you intend increasing or bringing back those salaries that were cut from the civil servant? Thank you. Thank you.
My name is Anthony Jin from, from ABC and the other agencies. And you talk about, uh, Mr. DG, you talk about um, other people were employed in violation of President George with their suspension of employment in 2023. Uh, you did not mention PVU, a particular number of persons that were employed because you intend to remove all of them because they violated the President uh, by suspending employment. How many persons were employed at the time? Thank you. My name is Samsi and I'm for for SFTV. So you mentioned about auditing the past administration from 2018 to 2023. How prepared is the agency? Thank you. I'm Domingo Tower. I'm Sean. So, when you take the last one, Give your follow up, the DG ticket, and answer the question. Okay. Thank you. I'm Domingo Dalin, I'm I am much concerned about what you said concerning the, 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 the 18 person work with value consultancy. Do you care to tell us what are some of those governmental institutions where those 18 persons provide value consultancy for? Thank you. Yeah, my follow up is that can you place a number? on the number of people that uh, your salary are imposing. Uh, you said that the, uh, since uh, the president made the, the pronouncement that uh, no new employees should go into government, uh, there were people who were added after that. Is there a figure that we can place uh, to, to that uh, uh, decision that been taken by the CSA? And also, uh, I don't know if I can ask that the minister to now, but uh, the minister, I want to know, uh, there have been this issue about people being nominated, and at some point, their names are removed, or nominations have been removed. There are some people in the public that uh, have distracted that as uh, some level of incompetency going on at the executive mansion. It is that as somehow embarrassing for the presidency. Do you believe so? Uh, do you believe that that is so hard embarrassing for the presidency that nominations are posted and then do all several occasions that are happening? Thank you. So I am so glad that you figure out the minister for that last question. And <laughs> I don't have to be the one to respond to that question you know, about nomination processes, all right. Uh, but let me take your question. You asked about the number of people whose salaries have been frozen. So I will tell you that immediately the process is complete, we'll release that information to the public. The process is ongoing. Our analysts are working as I speak to you right now. And uh, the process is spearheaded by the Deputy Director General for Human Resource Management and Policy. It's ongoing, and once we receive the final metrics, the total number of people, we owe you that disclosure. Um, so, Domingo, Domingo, you asked about yeah. the consultants, yeah. and you asked about some of the agencies, the 18 consultants, uh, provided consulting services, and the 18 consultants actually provided consulting services at the civil service agency. That's why I said taking the civil service agency as a test case. That was readily available to me. And that's why we made that assessment. And we used the CSA as a test case. So, uh, something, something you talk about the audit and you talk about how prepared we are. So, uh, we as CSA, will be working directly with the General Auditing Commission to effect this audit. It is within the statutory responsibility of the General Auditing Commission to conduct such audits. So it is the GAC that will carry out the audit. But we will collaborate with them. We will provide the scope and nature in terms of identifying the milestones of what we'll be looking for through other audit. So we will sit with the GAC to develop that framework, and we are doing that this week, as a matter of fact. We already had engagement, prior engagement with the uh, General Auditing Commission to that effect. So Anthony, you asked about the presidential directive. 
uh, you also want to know, want to know sorry, what the figure. Uh, again, we will let the public to know the exact figure. I'm not going to stand here and just say it off the top of my head, but I can assure you that we will release the figure to the public because that analysis has been done and the freezing is being done. It's an action that's ongoing as I speak to you. So Reagan, you asked about health workers, uh, security officers, you asked about teachers. We are seriously concerned. And that's what prior to your question, I indicated in my statement, opening statement, that all of these savings we're trying to do is to improve these very key sectors, is to uh, work with the government so that they can move some of the savings, for example, towards education, I underscore that, and the focus would be on our teachers, mainly in the rural areas. Uh, they are going through hardship, you know, they've experienced harsh and unbearable economic conditions over the years. We don't intend to allow them to suffer anymore, the minister told you. The arrest agenda, the rescue mission, that's what it intends to achieve, and we are committed to that. So savings will go towards places like education, this is like healthcare for our health workers across the country. We know how important healthcare is to us, to our assistant. Our security officers, these are people. So those are all human security areas that the government is particular about, very keen about. And so the fact that uh, I just took on the last set of questions, let me use the opportunity, Honorable Minister, to thank you and your entire team at the Ministry of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism for hosting us. This is my inaugural uh, briefing, <laughs> and I am so pleased and proud, you know, that I can do this, and I can do it for my country. This is something I've always longed for, although I had experience working for the National Elections Commission, for the Ministry of Education, for the National Commission on Arms, but not at this level. And I also want to congratulate the President, His Excellency, uh, Joseph Dimo Baca Sr., for uh, granting me this opportunity to serve my country. And as I said, we will come here from time to time to update the public on the things we do at the, at the CSA. But you can be assured that the CSA is ready for 360 degree reform to make sure that our workforce is not on a straight line, but is professionalized, and that measure matches the wage bill so that we are able to provide services effectively and efficiently across all government functionaries. Thank you very much. And thanks to you, the media. Without you, this is not possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. All right. Uh, yes, the voice uh, is the uh, Director General. Uh, so let me answer your question like this. I'm sorry, out of the question, I will ask now is the minister. I worked before I was myself as president. And I had working experiences in past administrations. Within the duration of time that we have covered, and the president has his cabinet fully constituted. Nominated someone, they got confirmed, then they got appointed, and they got commissioned. When I served in government in the past, my commissioning took place three years because when you go for elections and do all the politics, after the politics, you come to governance. And those who want to remain in the political queue because they can remain there, keep the focus. Do the governance. When the political time comes, actors will again jump into the theater and politics. We play. For now, it's time to govern and to again emphasize on your question no incompetence and executive management. The one who leads the ship, the one who is our president, is very competent, able, experienced, still, and steadfast leader. And that is the reason why I can voice and vouch as a spokesperson.